Here we go. We're doing it live now. I'm putting my shit in order. So when we get to our top five, I'll be ready this time, okay? Because I know you get mad when I'm not ready. You're I don't upset. feel that you ever have them ready to go. No, I don't. You I, just don't. Write, I don't even know that you write it down, but you never number them. You, you number them live when you're doing your of, list. I'm a last-minute guy. I'm a procrastinator. What can I say? Who's starting this podcast off? We already started. Rod Ryan, Jason Ginty. This oh. is episode, come on, give me episode two. 82? Come on, it's 82. I knew that. Jackass. I knew that. Uh, Rod Ryan, happy to be here. Jason Ginty, super happy to be here. Uh, one of us uh, decided to show up to the podcast this week. It's pretty cool. Um, it's hard to rip on a guy. It's hard to rip on a guy who's out there grinding his gears and raising money for charity. So I cannot yes. really get too upset here. We got a lot to cover today. We got a lot to cover today. We're going to talk a little Easter. We're going to talk... Um, Aaron Lewis just hit the 5-0 club, and I think, you know, I hit that a year and a half ago or whatever it was. So uh, Aaron Lewis uh, doesn't look a day over 70, and uh, we're going to go through our top five favorite Stain songs. So we'll talk about that. I got a, I got an interesting story I want to talk to you about. Uh, I know you and I actually sat down uh, for an interview with him years ago. I kind of want to go through that as well. And Voodoo, um, right? You and I talked to him? Yeah, and I want to talk about that when we get to it because it's, it's kind of funny. And then... Um, posters on the walls dude this is something that you came up with and i remember having posters but i was not the dude who had girls on the walls that was not something that was going to really fly uh with mama ginty in my in my house well there was okay the reason i sent this uh idea over to jason is samantha fox is having a birthday on saturday she's going to be 57 Oof. she's an English chick who kind of had a bit of a pop career, but she was definitely more known for her posters and her titties and her pictures. Yeah. And I think she started out as something called a page six girl. Um, I, I, I'm not, I can't explain it to you, but they used to put girls on this newspaper in England. And if you were a page six girl, that could launch your career. And she was the most popular. She was kind of the Pam Anderson of England. <laughs> uh, in her day, she really was. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's actually but it's a page she had a recording th- career. Yeah, it's a page three model in the uh, Sun page tabloid no- newspaper back in the uh, uh, eighty three to eighty six was when she was yes. reigning the as the queen. So now Jason and I didn't grow up together, meaning like go to grade school and junior high and high school. We met when we were in college, but he Jason grew up about I don't know twenty minutes, twenty five minutes from me. Yeah. You had your own mall in Lockport. That's where you, I'm, I'm from North Tonawanda. Jason's from Lockport. You had your own Lockport mall. Yeah, man. We had our own mall and it was, uh, it was about as good as you'd think it would be. Was there a Spencer's in that mall? Ooh, I, Ooh, that's a tough one. I don't recall if we were quite big enough for that. We had the AMNAs and the Montgomery wards and we had the, we had a, a record store, which is all I cared about, which was called Cabbages. That was one of the old yep. school uh, record stores back in the late 80s, early 90s. But so I'm talking that. about a true mall, not like an outdoor shopping where you went store to store via the outside. An inside mall like <sighs> Fast Times at Ridgemont High, a mall. Yeah, absolutely. We had a movie okay. theater. We had a, I think we had a J. Yeah. Crew. <laughs> so Spencer's was a store that sold – it's kind of a hard to explain, but when you're young – Spencer's, you would go straight to the back and there would be like an area that was lit up with black lights Mm -hmm. and your clothes would change colors and you would see all the dandruff on your shoulders. And and there was the posters. That's where they sold posters. And then they sold like fundies. You know, like uh, a couple could get into one pair of panties, uh, a pair yeah. of underwear. Like they sold like love, fuzzy love cuffs and shit like that. And then they kind of sold rock T-shirts in the front and Halloween masks. So in the back, there was an area that when you went to the mall when you were a little kid and you would tell your mom, okay, you would split off from your mom. And like, I'm going to go to Spencer's and then I'll meet you back. Because you didn't want to hang out with your mom at Spencer's. Mm-mm. You'd go straight to the back. And then boom, 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 you'd start looking at posters. Now, there were some rock band posters in there, and there was, but the girls. Yeah. And Samantha Fox, 
think about Farrah Fawcett and think about like anyone that was on Charlie's Angels had a poster, Wonder Woman. Mm. Um, mm. 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 That's mm. what the, the Spencer's experience was. And the first chick I ever hung up in my room was Wonder Woman. Yeah. And, and I, I don't know how, I, I think it actually was a picture that I pulled out of a magazine. And if I had the magazine, that means Kiss was somewhere in that magazine. Mm -hmm. But there was a picture of Linda Carter dressed as Wonder Woman. And I, I taped it up on the wall. And I remember my mom going, what's that? I'm like, nothing. He's like, you like that? No. <laughs> Like my mom's giving me a hard time. Like, why are you, like, what's up with the chicks? And it's like, I don't want to talk about it with you. You know, like, right. I, ugh, I don't want to get into it with you. And then I had a bigger guy, an older kid across the street that hooked me up with the Farrah Fawcett poster. And, and I had, and that was my first full blown poster on the wall. And Jesus Christ, I mean, nips out to hear everything. And I'm probably, I don't know, 12. So yeah. I, I don't know how that flew, but it somehow it flew. Yeah, I don't think it was ever discussed in my house about having like chicks on the posters on the walls, but I just never did it because I think I knew like what you're talking about right now. I just knew that were, that would be what would happen. It was a little mom, embarrassing. A lot embarrassing. Because I didn't want to talk about it, you know? No. And my mom was kind of like, hey, what's going on here? What's going on here? And I'm like, get out. Get out of my room. Get out. <laughs> room. Like talking to my wiener again. <laughs> but like, but you had, you know, the, you had Cindy Crawford up there. You had Uma Thurman from the Pulp Fiction getting a little bit later. This is a little after we're a little sure. bit older. Um, you know, uh, Catherine Bach, you had Daisy Duke. I mean, holy crap, Daisy Duke. She'd be leaning against the car. She had the the, the red little tie up T-shirt or button down shirt on, which was a huge deal. And remember yes. they had them, they had the posters a lot of times in those things that were like, you would take and you would just move poster after poster. They were, they were. Actual size in these like racks display, almost like in a well, frame. Where would you see those? Because that's what that's the where record we went. Okay, you're right. Record stores carried that shit too. So we went to Spencer's, and that's where we saw that stuff. And um, Cheryl Teagues yep. was Cheryl Teagues was kind of after Farrah Fawcett, and then tell me if you remember Heather Thomas. Yes, the Fall Guy, right? Was yes, she Fall dude. Guy or? Yes, I think so. Yes, yeah. Fall Guy. That was, I remember the poster, the bikini, the whole thing. I remember exactly how it looks. And, uh, I, you know, is there an equivalent? How old, I, I, I ask you this all the time, but how old is Henry? 14. Would he ever hang a chick up in his room? Hmm. Um, like, uh, I'm trying to think. I mean, not I Taylor Swift, not a mute. I'm trying to think of somebody on TV, but I just don't know. I don't know any TV, like new TV shows or anything. I or don't. is there, okay, he's into superheroes. So would he ever hang up? Um, Black I don't know, Widow? With, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, he's not a guy that hangs oh, shit. Yeah, I wish he would. <laughs> Maybe we should get it for him. No shit. Oh, that, that'd be creepy as hell. Hey, Dad, why are you in my room all the time? Because these posters are awesome and I can't have them in mine. <laughs> I mean, it could be a great social experiment. Let's get him the Black Widow poster and, a, and a, just a roll of tape and see what he does with it. I, you know what? He doesn't seem to care about what his room looks like. He doesn't seem to give a shit. He's not hung up one thing in there. Like, we've decorated shit for him. You know, we got him these cool, uh, when he got to be like, I don't know, 12 years old, we're like, all right. And I'm like, look, this is a dude. He's a young guy. Let's make whatever we buy this kid fucking indestructible. And then he could take to college someday. So we got all these badass, they're almost like metal locker room, big, tall shelves, probably about six feet tall, wide, okay. a couple drawers in them. They're metal, magnets. I'm like, yeah, magnets rule, right? You can collect magnets, you travel, collect magnets. So there's always gonna be magnets there and he can take them with him wherever he goes. We put a bunch of like baseball hats that he's collected as we've traveled and shit in there. And they just, everything we put in there has never moved in four years collecting dust. He doesn't seem to give a shit about that kind of thing. He doesn't give a shit about any of that. Dude, decorating my room was a huge thing. Oh, you spent um, hours doing it. I mean, even before putting posters on the wall, didn't we talk about the... Um... <laughs> the lights and the stars and shit. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I had like, for some reason... <laughs> When I moved in the basement, when I moved in the basement, that was afterwards, I had like a fish net on the ceiling. 
I don't know what the fuck that signified, but I had a fishnet on the ceiling. A you old sailor, you. You're a motorboat and son of a bitch. I was. <laughs> I was. But before putting posters on the wall, and I, I would cut out pictures, like I said, if any magazine that had Kiss on it, it didn't matter if the Bay City Rollers or Sean Cassidy was on the cover. That's a good one, too, Sean Cassidy, yep. If, I think my sister had a picture of him in her room, and that may have been her first dude. So if it had a little picture of Kiss, I wanted that magazine, right? So I would cut that out and I would put that stuff. Because eventually my mom gave in. She's like, no tape on the wall. God damn it. Blah, 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 blah. The whole thing, you know? And it's like she lost that. She lost the battle. Yeah. Where I really got in trouble was before that, speaking of decorating your room, we've talked before about um, what was the uh, what was the record and tape club? Oh, oh, Columbia uh, House. Columbia House. Yeah, the dollar for like 900 albums or something. Yeah, Columbia House Record and Tape Club. And they would send out an advertisement and there would be little albums, but they were like stamps. Stamps were cool. And, and, and you would, they were perforated. And I would take out all the Kiss ones and I licked it and I put it on my headboard. And I remember my mom being so oh. fucking mad because it was on the wood. <laughs> yeah. And the whole back... Like I didn't even know who I just if it was if it looked like it was a rock band I kind of just grabbed it and the the headboard of my I, we had twin beds me and my brother and I remember my headboard being full of those Casablanca or I'm sorry the Columbia House yeah the, the little stamp albums I forgot about the how cool would those be to have now though holy shit would those be fun the there's stamps. gotta be someone selling one on eBay oh, I'm sure but yeah yeah i remember like i didn't I, I was into cars like when i was like 15 16 i started getting really into like old cars so i would cut i would get car magazines read all about engines and dumb shit and then i'd cut out the cars and i'd have cars all over my walls so i was just into cars and it was like okay cool no big deal but i can remember like you go to a buddy's house right and then like you go into their room and of course you're you know when you're young you're like whoa what's this dude got for his shit in his room you know like how's his decorated yeah. that was always exciting to me to go to a buddy's house and be like oh shit and like, like a buddy of mine, he had like a cool David Lee Roth poster, but he had it on his ceiling. You know, I don't forget which one it was, but Roth was, wasn't wearing a shirt. And it was over his bed. I'm like, wow, you, you really like David Lee Roth, huh? And then like I went to another buddy's place. Is it from Van Halen just, too, where he's like spread eagle, where his legs yeah, are like- over the bed. Jumping I'm like, off the drum, drum yeah, jumping like, off the drum riser. Like that's, that's a little weird. Okay, you do you. And then I remember going to another buddy's house and he just had chicks everywhere. And I, I just felt like, that's creepy, dude. That's a little too much. Like, I get a balance. I'm cool with that. No problem. But it's just like his was over. Like, oh, I'm like, dude, you're you're gross. <laughs> I didn't touch anything in his room. <laughs> Bro, my very first poster, the fucking Fonz. It was the <laughs> Fonz. It, 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 it was just him and the jacket, and he's going like this. And he had the thumbs up. Hey, hey. Yeah. And, hmm? I, you know, my mom was always which I'm a little like this now. I buy stickers and stuff. And it's like, I don't know, there's going to be some time. There's going to be a cool place to put these or whatever. My mom was never into just getting a poster and getting a bunch of thumbtacks and putting it up. It's like, no, we're going to do something with this. And we never did anything with it. All of those Kiss albums back in the day came with shit, right? Yeah. And the, the solo albums each came with a poster that was that kind of had um, like cutouts on the side so that they fit together like a puzzle piece. And I remember wanting to put when I got all four Kiss solo albums, I wanted to put they were the, they were cartoons. They were beautiful. They're still in my albums today. I, I still never did anything with them. Uh, I wanted them all linked together and put them on the wall. And my mom just led me to believe that something was going to happen someday with these. And we never I never put them up. You know, that, and they're in the album in fucking mint condition right now. And mm. my kid's not going to want it. I, I I don't know why I do what I do. I, who wants this shit? But see, here's wants the, my dumb shit. But here's the thing. Do you, A, keep it pristine in the album, and then you just sell it on eBay for 200 bucks an album or whatever? Or do you take it out, because you're a damn grown-ass man at this point, and go to a a kick-ass framing store and have that shit framed. It's behind it the glass be, and you hang that shit up somewhere, you know, it would be four feet. It'd be four or five feet wide. Put it I mean, it would be huge. Dude, put it somewhere. That'd be badass. 
it would be fucking cool as it's shit. It's not signed. It's not any. It's, what am I going to do with this shit? I don't know. But that's the problem. When you collect this stuff, you're like, this is going to be great. And then you're like, yeah, is it? Fucking 53 old man. I'm going to get something kiss framed. Idiot. And I'm laughing about fucking people that go to worship Chewbacca. I'm no, I'm no better. It doesn't. Yeah, that's the thing. It doesn't matter. We all got our thing that we love. And that's cool. You know, when you shit on somebody else's thing, like if there's a guy who's a big fucking Chewbacca guy or Star Wars <laughs> dork, right? Okay. And he's like, what the fuck? Are you Star collecting? Wars guy. Yeah. What are you doing collecting <laughs> kiss shit? You're a dumbass, right? But it's the I'm same not thing. even actively collecting this stuff. We're just talking about it. I'm not hanging up kiss shit in my house. I, um, mm, mm, I, mm, just I don't sitting know about that. there. It's no. just sitting there in the album sleeve, in perfect condition, mint. Nothing, no kiss stuff on display in your house. That's what you're saying? Well, that's not 100% true. There's a couple like, of things. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, I was coming over there no, and I want I to play not. a little pinball. I'm yes. just throwing it out there. I'm just, but I'm I just, don't have the shrine. I used to have a shrine, you know, and I, you know. I don't have any of that anymore. I do have a kiss pinball machine and you brought it up. Have you seen the fin the Foo Fighter pinball machine? Yeah, holy shit! Get it, get it to my house today. I mean, it's get cool, it to my uh, house. Oh, fuck. Who can I put Look, when you years ago, when you're like, I think I'm gonna buy a, a Kiss pinball machine. I went, who the fuck buys a pinball machine? But then I remember thinking that'd be kind of cool. And then when you got it, we had to go to the fucking airport and pick it up. Remember that horse shit deal? Oh, geez, yeah. So <laughs> we're Jason and I were living together. together. Fucking heavy, man. <laughs> They're heavy. Wait a minute. We went to the airport to pick it up. It didn't get delivered to our house. No, it was like the way that was freighted in. It was out by the airport. I forget. We used like some different. It wasn't at the airport per se, but one of the hangars next door where they ship shit. I just okay. remember being some fucking disaster. But man, when that thing got, when we put that thing together and got it running. We played it so much. And it's it's an old, oh, it's a 1977, so it's an original old one. It's so slow. It's so clunky, you know, perfect. but we didn't care. It was so awesome. And then uh, and then we were still living together. And then I think I got the Guns N' Roses one, right? Yeah, you had that one as well. I'm like, holy and, shit, this is fucking great. <laughs> but I mean, we logged hours playing oh, that shit. Just, and just chugging beers for, hey, like it'd be a Saturday, like 10 a.m. And you'd hear it fucking click and then come on and you do, you know, and then you hear, I'd hear, I'd hear you playing it. I'm like, get up, come out, hung over and be like, dude, what are you doing? And you're like, ting, 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 ting. And I'm like, fuck yeah. I go, come on, I get the next one. And then next year, you know, we're cracking Grab beers. A beer. It's 10 o'clock at night. And we're like going through like three cases of beer between the two of us, like a couple of idiots, man. And then. Yeah. You wonder why we are the way we are today. But yeah, no, the pinball thing is pretty fucking cool. Um I I the only the I bought another one. So I bought the Metallica one. Yeah, and that cool. was like the the highest level. It was the the Master of Puppets one. That's the numbered one and everything. So the 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 Foo Fighter pinball machine, I don't have room. I don't need it. I don't need it. Okay. You don't, it's not about needing I, it. Well, to be honest with you. I'll tell you what, the thing that's really, over the years, the ACDC pinball machine is so fucking great. It's so unbelievably awesome. It's got a sub pinball machine inside, under the playing field, a ball will drop in, and then boom, there's, there's a sub field underneath that you can clear and see it. It's unbelievable. And the music and everything, it's so great. They're just getting better and better and better. Right, um, right. I might almost get the ACDC one before I got the Foo Fighter one, but I looked online 13 grand for the big one. You always want the best one. Whoa. And Jesus uh, Christ. And Jesus. now they're and so people go out, they buy them and then they resell them. Right. Sure. So I don't think you can get your hands on one for under 14, 15 dollars. It would be cheaper to just get those fucking kiss posters framed. It would be a lot better, but not as fun. But not as fun. No, because when I come over to your house some point, I want to play those damn pinball machines because that's the first thing I want to do. Yeah, I don't give a shit. What do you want to do? I don't care. Let's go play some pinball, bro. It is <laughs> fun. Fucking, it, it's it, the it is. dumbest fun you're going to have, man. It's eternally fun and it's timeless. 
You know, I mean, you know, I've got the old, I've got the multi cade. It's got the, and it's a big stand up, just like, you know, we grew up with. And it's got Donkey Kong and all that stuff on there. And, you know, some people are like, eh, I'm not into that anymore. But pinball machines just never go out of style. They're always fucking cool. At least to me, they are. Oh, they're completely awesome. Like I said, man, it's like, you know, that's something that, and that's got value. That's going to hold its value. That's always going to go up in value. That's always going to be something you're like, well, I could fucking sell these, you know, down the road or, you know, something like that. So how do we get on this topic? I don't remember, but. Uh, we started talking about titties and then it went into pinball machine. Oh, it's about kiss, normal. It's about kiss, normal. Magazines, girlies on the wall. Boom. That's it. Fonzie poster. Bring All it right. back. Bring it All back. right. Let me, let me bring it back to the posters real quick and we can move on. But. So I'm going through and I'm doing my poster research, which was really bizarre. And I'm looking at all these girls, right? <laughs> all these old posters. And I'm like, wow, Morgan Fairchild just always looked old. <laughs> Lonnie Anderson was never hot to me. She just Ooh, always looked you older. Think, you didn't think Lonnie Anderson was hot? I never Whoa. thought she was hot. I hated her hair. I'm like, what is that, man? It looks like Darth Vader's helmet. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of cotton candy y type of deal but like those two nothing 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 <sighs> so anyway here's my point i'm going about, through these posters what about, what about suzanne summers not Did really no mm -mm, nope nothing nobody home didn't care fucking weirdo i'm gonna I kick am. you right in your useless dick <laughs> it is fairly useless at this point <laughs> <laughs> gotta be honest uh so so, I'm go so we're kind of doing the exercise now. So I'm going through all these posters. I'm like, fuck, man. I said, I said, really, as I went through all of them, I started playing the game in my head. I'm like, who's the home run for me? Who's the ultimate of all of the posters I looked at? And granted, I'd look at every poster, like some creep four hours. I scrolled through for like 10 minutes. Okay. And I was, I was caught. I, I got into my, into my world of, it was really Daisy Duke and Wonder yeah. Woman, you know? Yeah. And I came, I came down. I'm like, you know what? I kept looking at Wonder Woman. I went, Linda Carter to this day. I mean, Linda Carter, I think ultimately that's it for me. I'm good. Linda Carter what, is probably my home run. What's your play on the, I mean, the most famous poster ever was Farrah Fawcett. Sure. That, are you going to tell me that didn't do anything for you back that in was, the day or today you look at it and it's just like, uh. Today I kind of go, yeah, okay. She's hot, pretty, all that good stuff. Man, I could look at Farrah Foster with the, the nippies and the whole nine yard going on. And I can't believe I just said nippies. And then I, nippies. nippies. Never hear the end of that. And then I look at like. She had the best nippies ever, though. Let me tell you. Yeah, her pretty her big. play When she did Playboy later in life, dude, the nips, they were unbelievable. Okay. Hang your hat on them. So, but I remember like, like looking at Linda Carter, not nippies. And I'm just like, there's just something about her that just screams, holy cow, wow. And not like a like a like a drooling idiot hot, just like a wow, classy, cool, hot. Mm, can't see your nippies. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, Linda Carter never showed her nippies. Not really. No, I mean, not in that way, you know. But she just, Dude. I don't know. I looked at her and I just like, holy shit, she wins. She wins. Well, who's your winner out of all of them? I think, I mean, classic Farrah Fawcett. It's a tie between her and and Wonder Woman. I mean, Wonder Woman, my first. I, I always have this thing about the first, you know? Yeah. Um, and the last time I ever even considered a poster was probably Pam Anderson. And I think at my going away party, uh, leaving for from Buffalo to New Orleans, I think they had one on the wall of her and they everybody signed it. So that was technically my last poster that the boys bought for me. Um, but I oh, I had a poster in my room. Because when I was young, long before I even really started drinking, I thought that alcohol advertising was cool. Yeah. Did you also, <laughs> like, it was just cool. There's something cool about the Budweiser logo or the Jack Daniels logo. It was cool. I'm like, man, I can't wait to drink someday. It's going to be so awesome. I, I got a hold of a, of a poster, a St. Pauli girl poster. Mm -hmm. And it's like this huge breasted Fraulein holding this big shooper of beer. And it was like, you never forget your first girl. And I had a St. Pauli girl poster in my room for a while. I'm in probably junior high, high school. I remember one of my parents' friends had a garage and I think he had like a St. Pauli, he had like an old Genesee cream ale poster up and he had a Budweiser, right? And then he had the St. Pauli girl one up there. And it was like, 
I remember sitting there and I'm probably 12 or 13 in the garage, hanging out with my dad and my dad's buddy and, and they're having beers. I'm just sitting there being a little kid. And I'm like, looking at that poster going, damn, you know what I mean? And I'm looking at those two guys. I'm like, ew, those old guys like girls. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? As your 12 year old self, I'm looking at these guys and I'm going, ew, you guys are gross. <laughs> so this one says 1985. I found the exact one that I have or that I had. Um, Vintage 1985 St. Pauli girl poster. So it's, it's high school. There you go. Uh, Put it right next to your kiss poster. You've got a whole nother room decorated, dude. Look at what I'm doing for you. Oh my God, dude. I would just rape myself looking at this poster. That's gross. It was awesome. Can you see the nippies? So great. Uh, no nippies, but boy. Nippies. But boy, anybody that told me that they went to Oktoberfest, oh. you know, if you, I'm, yeah, I know you have friends that were in the service. The only guys that went to Oktoberfest were dudes that were in the service. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow they made their way over to Germany and they went over to Oktoberfest in September, for God's sakes. And then they would talk about how great it was. Yeah. It seems like it would be awesome. I know we there's Oktoberfest celebrations everywhere. Just the local ones you go to are pretty spectacular. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm like walking around going, holy crap. What are these Germans doing? This is great. <laughs> Beer and girls. <laughs> what a great, simple concept that i love holy crap rod i got a question for you um oh shit do i christ oh yeah i do um this is just something to think about i just, I just popped up somebody threw this question at me the other day so like name that nip oh, that would be a great game actually <laughs> except for you on the radio <laughs> so it doesn't work you know? it would only work on the youtube channel yeah that's okay okay all right so here's here's a crazy philosophical type question that was thrown at me uh if your life expectancy suddenly increased to 500 years oh shit would you live differently than you currently are now you're still gonna have, to have a job it doesn't make you a superhuman you just got you instead of having like say what it's our our life expectancy now 78 instead of 78 you got 500 if all goes well right right knowing that you've got 500 fucking years you, ain't, you know what i mean like yeah because yeah of course it would change i mean because now i mean it's fucking weird to talk about, man. But like, dude, we're on the back nine, bro. Easy, so, dad. So you start thinking about not, you have guilt about doing things now. Oh. Where it's like, you know, do I need to be doing this at this moment in my life or eating this thing or whatever like that? I mean, I'm clearly not taking hard drugs. So you know, nothing to worry about with me. But drinking and eating, you, you would you would feel less guilty about it. I would. Those things, I actually think about those things now. When when we're talking about playing pinball and drinking from 10 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night playing pinball in our house and not having any responsibilities, you're yeah. just a dummy. Mm -hmm. And you and I are renting a house and there was there was no plan. There was nothing you had to do. And you just drank and played pinball all day. It's cool. It's awesome. It's the best. Great. So um, goddamn great. Holy shit. And then you started getting responsibilities and things. Like, ugh, yeah. what the hell happened? What did uh, I do? But yeah, I, 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 of course, I think you would I think you would live differently. Yeah. Yeah. For definitely. sure. Definitely. You bring, you bring up a great point, though. Like, <clears throat> and I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but like, I know that the last couple of years, like I, the whole 50 thing, it didn't freak me out at the time. We talked about a lot on one of those podcasts and I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm cool, man. I'm going to just keep doing my thing. But man, I tell you what, the clock ticks a little louder in your brain. You know what I mean? And I think that's what you were alluding to is like, you start feeling like, yeah, back nine, click, 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 tick, 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 you know? And I kind of brought it up to somebody recently where they're like, man, you, you just don't seem to give a fuck about anything. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I do. I care about a lot of things very deeply, but I don't care about dumb shit. And I want to talk about dumb shit. You know what I mean? Like, and I, and I tried to explain it and I probably didn't have a great analogy, but I'll explain it and you can help me on, on this one. I'm a big fan of war movies. I think, you know, Saving Private Ryan, all the movies, right? We talked about endlessly on this podcast. Yes. Well, anytime there's war or battle, there's going to be what I like to call collateral damage. You're going to lose some tanks along the way. You're going to lose some things, but at the end of the day, yes, that sucks that you lost these things, but the end game, you've won the battle, you've won the war, all, you know what I mean? You've got a, you've got a mission, you've got a goal. What matters is the mission and the goal. 
And I, I used to get caught up in the collateral damage. I tried to save everything along the way. And I'd worry about all these little things that ultimately at the end of the game, when I wanted to get to that goal, didn't really matter. I think I've learned where I, I can just go, hey, whatever, fuck it. There goes a the tank. All good. You know what I mean? And I've learned, and it's a terrible analogy, but you get what I'm saying, right? Like I don't get caught up in the, what they say is getting caught up in the weeds. Correct. You know I mean, I mean I, don't sweat the small stuff. And I, I've really never, I always got worried. I always freak out about fucking everything. And now I'm like, yeah, that's cool. We don't really need to do that to get this done. Okay, move on next, you know? And I've kind of learned to really not give a shit about those things. You don't, you don't want to waste time. Oh God, fuck no. You don't want to waste time. That doesn't mean that you're just, you're running around your house and you're doing everything, but you don't want to waste time. It's why you and I, we don't argue about politics. What's it going to fix? Nothing. You know, like what, you, you know, what are you and I going to fucking balance the budget? Is that what's going to happen? Are, are we going to fix what's happening in Ukraine? No. It's just, you know, are, do we know who's going to run and who's going to become the next president and what it means to the country? Um, I, it's not that I don't think those things are important. I do. But I think talking, I, because in my own time, and I do let this out on the radio a little bit. I said, I watch this stuff a lot more than I let on. It's just not in the background to me. You know, that's what old guys do. You have the news on in the background and you have it rolling. And, you know, every now and then I got to like, fuck this, put on diners, drive-ins and dives. I need some Guy Fieri in my life because I'm watching too much of it sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I, I know what's going on, but I do not choose to talk about it with anybody. Why? It's a fucking waste of time. It is. It's a circle. I, liked, I love debating with you on stuff because it's stuff that really does interest me. Like politics interests me, but I never want to debate it with anybody, but I'll go fucking all night with you on who the best drummer is or whatever. That's fun to me. We still don't, there's no, there's no finish line, mm -mm. but I enjoy it. And there's other things that I just don't enjoy talking about, even though... I'm interested in it, but there's, it's a waste. It's a waste of time. Arguing is a waste of time. Fun discussions that we have and you and I disagreeing on things. I love that, man. That like makes me come alive. Yeah. The yeah. other, the other stuff, I don't have time for it. I just don't have time. Well, I think um, too, what you're saying is that some of the other bullshit at work and stuff I just had a discussion. It's like, well, you know, what do you think this or this or this? I'm like, you know what? It's not that important. I don't give a shit. I don't want to come across like I don't give a shit, but work it out. Figure it out. I mean, I had that discussion this morning, um, and I'll leave it at that. I just said, you know what? I don't really think anybody gives a shit, but you guys decide which one comes first and work it out yourselves. Doesn't mean I don't care. It's just like, but I don't care to get into that. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and again, these things come with intelligence, age, and experience. Now, I didn't have the intelligence. I still don't think I have the intelligence, but I have the experience and I have the age. So I think it took me a long time to figure all that shit out. And, uh, you know, it's it's kind of nice knowing what I know now because I don't, you know, if, if, if I'm having discussions with friends or family and they're like talking about, I don't know, just, you know, somebody cut their grass the other day and they blew the grass under our driveway and it's a big fucking drama or some shit. I'm like, you know what? The wind's going to fix it. What's the big fucking deal? Don't lose your shit over it. That okay. Kind of stuff. So I'm not on that neighborhood website. Oh, don't, I do don't. not, I Fuck do not give a shit what's going on. Now I get it. Like I do. I asked the guy across the street. I'm like, Hey bro, what, you know, Hey, power was out. What did it say? I'll get it from him. I am not following drama, drama. All I it can't. Is. It's all it is, uh, too. So the neighborhood website, it kind of reminds me of like kind of where you were going. I absolutely will not. I, I'm not even on it. I don't even have it. I'm not logged in. Nothing. I don't want to know what's going on. When Next Door Neighbor first came out, I got on it because, you know, our dog gets out once in a while. And, and it's like, hey, lost dog. I'm like, oh, shit, this is fucking great, man. Because, hey, I saw it, you know, and I'd post like, hey, I saw your dog, dude. And I'll, I'll run out and see if I still got it and then come by and get your dog, you know, for or, or you know, hey, there's there's a dipshit doing burnouts at the corner of X and Y Street. OK, OK. All right. Oh, I get sorry, that. That's my kid. Yeah, it's probably me. So it's <laughs> like, OK, well, I won't do it on that corner anymore. But then it, you're right. All the drama came up and I'm like, you know what? I don't want to hear about this 
this Karen fucking website now. I, I punched out too because like, I don't care. I don't care. You know, it just got to be the point where I'm like, I don't care. And it's it's cut out the, the, the collateral damage and move forward and keep firing towards that goal, you know? I'm sure you have friends that are not on social media. And, you know, my boy next door, you know, he, the Australian, he's, he's a lawyer. He doesn't have an Instagram. He's never seen a TikTok. He's he just doesn't want that static, you know, I'm like, that's awesome. That's what it is too. It's static. It's fucking static. It's noise. I wish I didn't have it, but because of the job, you know, I'll, and I, I don't post a lot of personal shit. It's all radio station shit, but I, it's all bullshit. I, I don't care. I don't fucking care. And if, man, I tell you what, the day I'm not doing radio anymore and I don't need social media, <laughs> fucking see you later, man. I'll just, you'll, you'll bug out on all of it. I find it. I find myself sitting on my phone a lot and just scrolling. And I'm like, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing right now? Yeah, the, 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 the videos are next level because they just go into another one, into another one. Like, for instance, TikTok, somebody will send me a link. Hey, dude, you got to check out this TikTok. And the Rod Ryan's show, we are on TikTok. And, okay, I'll watch it. You close out. Nope, here's another mm -hmm. video. It won't let you close out. It, it forces at least one more on you. Yep. And the success rate of keeping somebody in there to go watch another one. And it's like, okay, another 20 second one. Oh yeah. That's fucking funny right there. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look what she's doing. Oh my God. Yeah. It's, it's crazy that I catch myself sometimes and I feel like a lesser human being. Um, when I get caught up in, in scrolling something, I'll, I mean, I'll sit there and I'll scroll sometimes and I'll get caught up in it. Oh yeah. my God damn. It is I mean, as somebody with a little bit weaker constitution, I could see where you would just get lost in it. Oh, absolutely. And and, and I do it because I, I will follow certain things and certain pages and stuff because I want to get better at it for the radio stations and stuff. You know, I, like, I, I'm a student of it. I, I look at it from that point. But when I go on to do that, next thing you know, oh, look at that cat. Holy shit. Look at this guy. Oh, wow. That guy's never getting up from that crash. You know what I mean? Like, and, and next thing you know, yeah. I'm in the weeds 20 minutes later and I get so mad. I'm like, what are you fucking doing? This is not doing anything for you right now. And I get it. It is an escape for some people. And that's cool, man. But I just can't so, do it. So you brought something up and and I haven't busted your balls as being the big boss for a while. But thank God. Are you the guy that says, guys, we got to step up our social presence? Okay. Mm -hmm. You tell your people you got to be posting because I'm sure here, this is the problem that my station has. Everybody has their own personal accounts, right? And, you know, I have a, I have my page that, you know, my mom and, aunt, you know, like a Facebook page. Um, and I have, a, I have an Instagram that I don't use that much. It's all Rod Ryan's show. And, you know, the radio station's like, well, listen, put some shit on our stuff too, you know? I mean, don't just put it all on yours. And the problem is, I want to go, I want to put stuff on the Rod Ryan show. And then I have a sub problem of my guys all have their own account and they want all the good shit on their stuff, you know? So it's, it's like that. So as you, as the boss, do you have to tell people guys, everyone has to contribute to the station pages. And I mean, Instagram, do you have a TikTok for the station? Uh, we have, we can barely keep up with what we got. <laughs> right. You know I mean, we don't have a TikTok yet. I mean, I okay. mean, maybe we do, but I don't think we, we've never used it. So, uh, yeah, no, we, th there's, uh, I put in some parameters and I said, look, I don't give a fuck what you do, but you got to post some content that's, that's relatable to our audience X number per day. So if you're doing like I do afternoon drive, I'm going to post three times every afternoon. That's it. It's going to be, mm -hmm. it, it could just be a link. It could be something, but it's going to be something that we think from a radio station standpoint is going to, our audience will care about. It'll be music. It'll be movies, pop culture, you know, don't run with scissors, anything like that. It's just, it's kind of like, um, well, it's kind of like what you do with your stuff. You know, it's, 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 Hey, wow. The Foo Fighters put out some little tease of a piece of music. Is that in a new album? Right. We, we just kind of repurpose a lot of that shit. So I say, yes, put out, X number of posts every day. And that's just the rules. I don't give a shit what it is as long as it pertains to our audience in some sort of way. 
And that's actually worked out to our benefit because we see all our numbers going up like crazy and, oh, it's, and it's the right thing to do. So, but yeah, you're right. It's like some people would rather post their own shit. And I get where your challenge is because you have a lot of personalities on your show that are all doing their own unique thing. So I don't really necessarily have that uh, challenge. And, and I get why you all, everyone wants to have their own numbers driven because ultimately there's ways to make money and monetize your own pages. But it's just personal satisfaction when you see like you put something on your own and it, it it's, you know, it's been this way. It's like, well, I don't, you know, I can put stuff out there. Sure. I'm on the Rod Ryan show, but look at people just like what I do. <laughs> it, 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 it makes them feel good. And I'm not, it's not me bagging on them. It just, there's a, there's a real satisfaction of, you know, look, I did this without daddy, you know, and look at people like my stuff and it, it makes them feel really good. So that you start getting thirstier and thirstier for that stuff. Right. You can't blame anybody for doing it either. I, I, sure. I'm, I, I'm for it. I, Cause it ultimately, if, if, if your personality is a brand on your radio station, it's ultimately going to come back to the radio station. It's not like flashing yes. the logo in their face every day, but it all, it all is an aggregate over time. And you know, you guys have been doing it for a million years. So that is what's happening. You're just continually being in people's faces uh, and I mean that in a good way, you know what I mean? And that's kind of what we've been doing. And it, and it, and it does pay off. It's just, it, there's no way to quantify it. You know, you get your you get your stats every month. You read them, you go, like, oh, we're up 10,000% this month. And the next month you might be off a little bit. It's consistently doing the same shit over and over again. So yeah, that's the issue. You gotta have, you gotta fucking tell people what to do sometimes. You know what I'm saying, Rod? <laughs> you gotta get yeah. them straight. You gotta get them straight. You gotta sit them down. You gotta look them in the fucking eye and you gotta go, hey, let's get your shit together. I don't have that problem where I work because my peeps are good and they're working hard. Yeah. Who's, birth who's having a birthday, Rodney? Who's turning 50 now? Uh, Aaron Lewis uh, from Stained turning 50 years old. I'm 50 years old. Sally O'Malley. I like to kick, stretch, and kick. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. Um, yeah, Aaron Lewis, uh, 50 years old. Uh, I've had... Uh, Many encounters with him over the years. I know that you have as well, and I think we've had some encounters with him together. Uh, maybe we could take a short break and then come back with some fun Aaron Lewis stories and then top five stained songs. You prepared? So, yeah, I'm, I'm prepared. And, and, and look, I'm going to do the old school radio thing where I will tell a story where I possibly almost killed Aaron Lewis back what? in the day. Coming up after the break. Hey, guys, lots of stuff going on in New Orleans. Uh, French Quarter Fest is something that we don't talk about all that much. The rest of the world's not really all in on it. But, boy, it's a really cool thing that's coming up in New Orleans. It's always right before Jazz Fest. Jazz Fest is coming up in a couple of weeks, two huge weekends. Um, it's just it's a great time to go to New Orleans. So, Maybe you have a reason you're going to New Orleans or you have no reason at all. You just want to go and just get away. One of the things you need to do is take a French Quarter walking tour. Like no other real pirate history of New Orleans, uh, Pirates of the Quarter, okay? Um, you're going to find out such fun things. You're going to be led around by a pirate, and they're going to talk to you about all the things that happened in New Orleans and how New Orleans was formed. And you're going to find out there's so much more to New Orleans than just Bourbon Street. You can book your tour, piratesofthequarter.com. All the socials we just talked about, at Pirates of the Quarter. I can't get these guys on TikTok to save my life. No, so not. they uh, they do have piratesofthequarter.com, and they have a new store page. So in there, you can get your T-shirts and all that good stuff, piratesofthequarter.com. You can book right from there. So as soon as you book your trip, then book the tour. And you're walking around, you're drinking, you're having a great time. Everything is at piratesofthequarter.com. Okay. And again, another reason why it's great to go to New Orleans, because similar to here in Houston, that's all of our list, most of our listeners between New Orleans and here. It's just going to get really, really hot. Right now, it's awesome. I mean, it could be 90 degrees next week. It could be 100 degrees in two weeks. So, yeah, get there now, man. It's a great time to visit. It is. It's very cool right now, and the weather is actually pretty good. And, uh, uh, you know, I know you're coming in for Jazz Fest. Going to have a little fun that weekend. So, yeah. you know, looking forward to all that shit. So, um, so back in uh, the early aughts, 
early 2000s, uh, I was working at a radio, different radio station, and uh, we put together a little private performance with Stained. It was pretty cool, right? Going to do a little acoustic set, and it was going to be Mike uh, Mushak, Mushik, how do you say his fucking name? Mushak. Mushak, uh, the guitar player, and uh, Aaron Lewis of Stained. And they said, yeah, we'll do, a, we'll do like three or four songs, get some listeners, you know, the whole thing. Do a little lounge. And, and, and I said, great, this is going to be fucking awesome, because I was a huge fan. I thought, how cool is this going to be? And they said, well, look, you got to you got to give the boys a ride from the arena because they were playing that night at the New Orleans Arena up to the performance space where we're going to do this little cool lounge. And it's about, I don't know, three miles away. OK, and I said, cool, I'll come over, pick them up and we'll cruise up there. OK, fine. Good. Go over to the arena in the parking lot, you know, where the tour bus is, pull up, park my car. And uh, there's Aaron Lewis. Polishing a big fucking beautiful Harley Davidson black, just as nice of a bike as you could imagine, right? And he's just sitting there fucking polishing the shit out of the bike. And Aaron Lewis, when you look at videos, you see him in the sh in concert, he looks like a guy that's not very approachable. He comes off as a little crusty, a little grumpy, you know? And uh, so I'm like standing there watching him polish his motorcycle. And I'm like talking to the, you know, the, the manager. And I go, uh, is he ready to go? What's up? And then Aaron just sits there and he turns around and he goes, y'all going to have to tell me when it's time to go because I will sit out here and polish on this bitch all night. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, all right, all right. I said, well, you got a couple of minutes, dude. So apparently what Aaron was doing at the time, I don't know if he still does it, but when they got their tour buses, they're, one of the buses is pulling a trailer. His motorcycle goes with him on the, on the road. So when he gets to a town, he can polish it up and go drive around your city uh, the night of the show and then he'll drive it into the trailer, lock it up, and then go up, do the show, and then they're off to the next show the next, you know, the next night. So I'm like, fuck yeah. So he's out there, and this thing is black. It is pristine. I, he said, hey, is it cool if I ride my motorcycle up to the venue? I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. How cool and rock star is that shit? You showing up on a Harley? Badass. So I, I said, Mike, you ride with me. And I got my wife's car because at the time she had a much nicer car, and I don't want to be a fucking guy showing up in a Nissan Sentra <laughs> dragging a rock band around. <laughs> So I clean out the car seat in the back and all the all the old French fries because if you got a little kid, you know what the fuck's under that car seat, right? So I yep. got it cleaned up and stuff. So the manager and Mike are in my wife's car, and I'm driving, and Mike's in the back seat, and we start driving. I said, "Ooh, you know what? I'll go down St. Charles Avenue, the oak trees, the streetcar." I'm thinking about Aaron. I'm like, "Fucking driving your Harley down St. Charles Avenue, the mansions, the trees. I mean, it's what a beautiful, beautiful ride." What a fucking unbelievable ride this is going to be for this guy. He's going to love me. He's going to thank me when we get to the venue, right? We get to St. Charles Avenue, right? And, and you know how New Orleans is, man. There's like no outlets. You Once you're on a mission and on a lane, you're fucked. You're staying on it because there's not a lot of places to dive off, right? I get two blocks into St. Charles Avenue, not thinking that they're doing fucking construction. They got St. Charles Avenue ripped to shit. Ah. And when I say ripped to shit, I mean, like, the pavement's all been stripped off. It's just stones and dirt and dust. Dude, not good for a brand new shiny Harley. Did I just say dust? I don't think you know how much fucking dust was out there. And it's rough. I mean, potholes. He's There's manhole covers that are five inches above where they stripped the, the pavement away. So we get about three blocks down and I'm like, okay, what can I do? Can I dive out of this fucking situation? No, because every side street is dog shit in New Orleans too. So I'm like, it's just going to be worse. I'm going to get the guy lost. And I'm like, fuck it. I got, I got to keep going. And I look in my rearview mirror and I see Aaron fucking Lewis on his beautiful Harley Davidson. <laughs> like he's squirreling around. And oh, <laughs> I mean, dude, on the he's, pebbles and everything. Uh, pebbles, it's awful. And he's, and I'm seeing him bouncing. His glasses are going fucking crooked. I mean, dude, he is just getting beat to shit on his bike. And 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 I and I'm talking to Mike, and I go, I go, hey, uh, how much does Aaron really love his motorcycle? And Come Mike on. goes, he goes, could you found a fucking worse road to go down? What is this, the Appalachian Trail? And I'm like, oh fuck, dude. Holy fuck. And he's, I'm mean, dude, this is three miles of shit. I had no outlet to go. So it was all fucked. We get to the venue and I'm like, I'm like, Mike, help me out. And he goes, you're on your own, bro. <laughs> and he's just laughing. And he was awesome. And I go, oh God. So park the car, 
uh, Mike goes into the venue. I walk over to where Aaron is. He pulls up and you know how it is when you get off your bike, you got to take your helmet off. You got to come off the bike, you know, and he stand there and he takes his helmet off and it's just caked in dust. <laughs> it's just the tires are fucking brown. And I look at him and I go, dude, I'm so, so sorry about that. He just fucking turned around. And you know what Aaron Lewis looks like? He's, a he's fucking intimidating. Guy. He's an intimidating fucking guy. He looks like a linebacker. And he looks at me and he goes, yeah. <laughs> I can walk away. He goes into the venue. I went, oh, oh, fuck. He hates me. And I'm worried about, was he going to perform? Is he so fucking pissed? Is he going to, you know, long story short, he actually, uh, he, he said, dude, he goes, that was the worst fucking ride I've ever been on. I go, dude, I'm so sorry. And I said, I didn't know. I said, I don't go up off town very often. I had no idea. And I said, there's no way to get you out of it. I was going to take it on some side streets. He's like, fuck no, no. He goes, you, you got caught in the wash. That was the only move. He goes, it sucked, but it was still kind of fun. I go, oh my God, fuck. So yeah, I almost killed fucking Aaron Lewis. He was bouncing around on that motorcycle, dude. Oh. Pebble, awful. Cleaning a motorcycle is terrible. He had shit everywhere. Ugh. Oh, every like that black the gas tank. When you know the gas tank is just coated with that layer of dust, you know he's got a long night ahead of him. <laughs> so every time I've seen this guy, you and I, I think did did you and I did we interview him back like in the I don't know artist area at Voodoo? We did years ago. It was kind of a weird thing because we we're just hanging out. And we're fucking pounding beers, right? Because we figured we were done for the day. We broadcast all day, and then we're like, "All right, let's just hang out." And then someone comes running and say, "Hey guys, go go interview uh, Aaron uh, Aaron Lewis from Stain." And I looked at you, and I'm like, "Fuck yeah!" And you're like, "Yeah, let's go." And so uh, he's he's rolling joints the whole time that we're talking to him. Yeah, we're sitting around like this cool little table on like these couches outside and shit. Yeah, and fucking and rock star shit. Rolling, rolling, rolling joints. He did the exact same thing in studio. And I remember that was when Travis was on the show, my first sports guy. So this is like 04, 05. Aaron Lewis is rolling a joint. And, you know, it's kind of a big deal for marijuana to be out. It's not talked about. It's still pretty taboo. I mean, it's still illegal here, right. um, but he's rolling a joint. And I remember Travis losing his ever loving mind. Oh my God, that's drugs. Like, like draw that's drugs. It's fucking hard stuff, man. And Travis was losing his shit because there was marijuana in the room. And Aaron's just rolling as he's talking to us. It's just like it's no big deal. But I remember him smoking while we were talking to him. So yeah. 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 nice guy. Um, I, I always felt that he gave a, a good interview. Mm -hmm. He's not a super dynamic dude. Um, he's a mellow, mellow guy. Um He's yeah, mellow, yeah. Um, but nice though. I, I I always felt that he gave a good interview. I always felt that he answered questions and it's been a long, long time since I talked to him. Um, leaving you open for the, it's been a while since uh, I, I've chatted him up, but mm. staying kind of back together, which was great news. They were apart forever. Yeah. And then Stain were getting back and they still haven't rolled through here as far as I know. No. Uh, five, let's do it, dude. Aaron Lewis turning 50 today. At, well, today being Thursday, the time that this podcast comes out. So happy birthday, Aaron Lewis, on April 13th. Top five Stain songs. You know, it's funny because remember back in the day, and I'm sure there's people going, oh, what the fuck are you doing five Stain songs? Come on. He's a whiny bitch. And it's always, oh, every song's about my dad hates me. And it's like, you know, back in the day that they would, they would take a lot of shit about that, about like, oh, every song's about, you know, your dad's dick and stuff and boo-hoo. And I'm like, well, yeah, but you write what you know. <laughs> At the end of the day, you write what you know. And that's what the dude knew. And he I wrote great songs. Talking to him about that because somebody had approached him. The, there was a story that kind of you know hit the wire. And uh, he was a little concerned because he had seen the first tattoo of him on somebody. And I remember t talking to him shortly after that had come out. And I asked him, I said, dude, I heard that, you know, everyone's kind of heard the story that you saw a tattoo of you on somebody. It was a, it was an actual uh, portrait. And, uh, and he said, yeah, it did freak him out a little bit. And I said, I go, it's, it's, you're, you're a different guy. People are connecting with you on a different way. 
people aren't connecting with Fred Durst on his lyrics. Lyrically, they're not connecting with Fred that way. They like Limp Biscuit, and I say that because Limp Biscuit ultimately signed Stained. But they were they were a band that people were listening to the lyrics and saying, "Holy shit, dude, me too." Mm -hmm. And not every artist does that, you know. Every artist, you know, they everybody does the same thing with the music and the the the, the lyrics and the song and everything. But not all lyrics hit like they do. Um, you know, I talk about that with Justin of Blue October. He's another one that just, he writes lyrics that deeply connect with his audience. But Aaron Lewis was, you know, an early, early guy for me that one of the guys that, you know, in, in our genre of music that I really noticed it. I mean, kind of like, like Kurt Cobain, you know, it was like that. And I mean, you know, and I think a huge... Aaron's idol was, you know, he loved and worshipped Alice in Chains. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that song Lane that they did uh, is actually an amazing song. And the way he sings it is very, it sounds very much Lane Staley. It's a great tribute song. And they would do a cover of Nutshell all the time. And mm -hmm. it, yeah, he loved and he, but he just, he, his lyrics connected with people. So Mopey, yes, but boy, man, people really connected with him on that level. And seeing them live probably five or six times over the years, man, they brought that shit. Like they would just come in there and pound you in the face for like an hour and a half, man. And, and they were always great live. I saw them at different size. I saw them at the House of Blues here, which is like 900 people. And I've seen them at bigger venues over the years and just delivered the goods. And which was really interesting after we did that private performance, right? You know, it's, it's 30 people and a couple of acoustic tunes. They killed it. They sounded great. So afterwards, we go backstage and we're talking, and and it was so weird to like hear artists post gaming their gig, and it was only three songs or four songs, right? And he's like, him and Mike are like, like yeah, no, that that one turned out great, and oh yeah, that part you did, you threw that little thing in there, and they were like, they were breaking down what they just did, and and Aaron's got this smile on his face, like yeah, man, no, no, that I, I nailed that one part, and they're just sitting there talking like they're post game in the 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 gig and i'm watching it going okay that's fucking cool you know you think that you sang that it's been a while nine trillion times but he's you know what they're talking about oh oh yeah we, we did this part really turned out great and we've been having trouble with this part in other times and just going through the whole thing and i'm like okay it just goes to show you these guys even though they sing that same song a million times they're still that always trying to improve and get better with it you know and it was kind of a cool behind the scenes thing that I was lucky as shit that he didn't kill me first of all, but to see that was neat. Yeah. I mean, musicians can just like pro athletes will break down the film afterwards. You That's know, exactly what it was. Look. And yeah, they, they know that stuff. They're like, yeah, in that song here at that moment, they remember that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was like a, like, you don't think of it. You're like, ah, here they're singing that fucking song again, you know, but yeah, no, that, that, that's, that's hard. That's, that's work. That's you. You always want to continue to uh, evolve your craft, even though you've sung. You know, it's been a while. You know, thousands of times. You can always do a little better. You know. All right, what you got? All right. Um, you know, it was fun going through this exercise because I spent about a half an hour just digging through Stain songs. So it was kind of fun listening to a, a lot of their songs. Um, number five, they got a great song called "Fade," that I should have looked up the album. And you think I did that? I didn't. Because I'm lazy. Break the cycle, third album. Third album. There you go. Thanks. I'm, I knew you'd have, you'd step in on that one. Uh, love that song. Um, you know, we, you and I talked about it before the podcast started a little bit, and it's like other stuff is very similar. <laughs> so it's hard to differentiate with these names. You know what I mean? It doesn't stand out. And, and I'm not. That's not a knock on them. I like it because the songs are different. Yes, but there's a similarity that's very similar. You know, they have a formula. Right. They have a formula and they obviously hit with a couple of songs and they said, okay, this works and he likes it. And that's where he's comfortable singing. And that's the tone that he likes. And it, it just, it works, you know? And he's got a unique delivery and in, in his melodies, like they, they, there's a lot of fucking singing in his songs. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like going back to the Neil Peart joke about him being too drummy. I'm not saying that Aaron Lewis is too singy, but he sings a lot in those songs. You know what I mean? There's a lot of singing going on, especially when he, he gets does. to like the hooks and the choruses, if you've noticed. Uh, that was number five was Fade. Number four, Right Here. 
again, didn't look up the albums. I had it right at my fingertips too. Right here is a great song. Chapter five. Uh, um, that was number five. Number. No, no, that's your number four. It comes from the album Chapter Five. <laughs> I'm writing it down just for next time we do this again next year. Uh, that okay. was number four. Right here, right? Okay. Yeah, right here. Number four. Number th number three uh, is a song called How About You. Again, Ooh. love that song. Love that song. I can't, I can't sing it in my head right now. Yeah, I'm not about to because I'm not a singer. So um, I'm, you're just going to go dig this shit up later. After you finish the podcast, you just got to go back and listen to these songs, which oddly can, enough, I do. Fucking hum me a bar or two, nothing. It, it sounds like the other ones. Um, how about you? Great song. Number two. <laughs> Number, I does not know what he, where he's at. I don't. Well, I, you are I, on number two. I change it up so often. Uh, number two is the song Price to Play. Price to Play. It's a great Another song. Great song. Love that I song. I don't know what album that comes from, but yeah, Price to Play is an awesome Price song. Price to Play is another great song. Uh, that is number two. And number one um, and, uh, is the song called So Far Away. All right. Now, it's a great song, but when I get to the bridge, they bring it in hard and they bring in the strings and you're like, this is some epic fucking shit. So far away is my number one. I did not put in there. It's been a while. Although I love the fucking song. Played it. I played it. I know, but it's so it. great though. And the lyrics are great and it's so great. So yeah. Um, those are my top five songs from Stain. Okay. Um, I had to get some rockers in there. So for you in at number five. So oh, I don't have that, that one. Song. What's that? Fuck, that's a good one too, man. Shit. For you is good. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Really good. Really good. That I, I was struggling. Well, I'll tell you afterwards what didn't make my list. So five for you, four so far away. Nice. Great song. The bridge. The bridge. Three outside mm -hmm. live acoustic. Fred Durst yeah. with the clunker fucking guitar note, Biloxi, Mississippi. Yeah, saying Biloxi wrong, the whole fucking thing. Yes. Um, that Shit. was the 1999 Family Values Tour. And that's what that's the song that put him on the map. That's the one. It was that version. It was that's what got him to where they got. It, it's it's awesome. I mean, again, like you said, yeah, the way he says Biloxi and the clunker guitar note, but I, I, the live acoustic is just, it's awesome. It is awesome. That's my number three. My number two, I'm thinking the first introduction, the first stain song I ever heard was Mud Shovel. Yeah. And it's just, it's so fucking, it sounds like nothing else that they do. Like later on, it's heavy as shit. Mm -hmm. And he's almost kind of like, I mean, he's almost got a little bit, not a scream core, but he's just really getting grovelly with his voice uh, in Mud Shovel. And then there's just no denying, man. It's their stairway to heaven, man. It's been a while. Yeah. I, I know it's just overplayed. I, I don't think either one of us put stairway in our top five for, for them, but I felt it had to be there. The lyrics, everything, it's so great. Yep. It really is a fucking amazing song. And... Played it a million times, but you know what? Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Is that mm -hmm. we don't play that that much anymore? No, that's that's come out of. I don't know if it's not testing. It's not really. It's not in rotation on the morning show, and and I really wouldn't want that tempo on the morning show. Not that we don't play slower songs, but some of the stain stuff is you know. Eh. We played a stain song this morning and Tess and I were going back and forth. What's the best stain song? So I, and I still didn't put it together to do this on the, the podcast today, but then I saw Aaron Lewis with the birthday. I can't, I can't deny it's been a while. Yeah. It's, as, it's as their best song. And my, it's my favorite song of theirs. Yes. Oh, absolutely. And um, there's another song they do uh, eyes wide open. That's fucking heavy. Very heavy, and he's doing that. Yeah, scream. they have heavy stuff. They it's got just, some great stuff, heavy shit. That stuff just didn't make the radio. It didn't. Radio, stick. radio yeah. wanted. It's been a while, over and over and over again. And you know what? Stain was pretty smart about it. 
they yeah. served that up and then we're also going to put some heavy tracks on there but we're not expecting these to be on the radio but we're still going to stay true to ourselves and include those on the albums um another song that didn't make it was this we just talked about it a minute ago was lane the tribute song to lane staley it's fucking yep. great i mean it's 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 allison chains it really has that sound and he's layered his voices like uh lane would do with jerry cantrell and the album stuff it's it's fucking great and then he wrote a great song and this will get you every time especially as a father um he wrote a song for his kid zoe jane and it's just oh, about, i forgot about that song it's it's fucking great i mean if you're a dad you hear it and you're like oh yeah i totally get this one man you know it's it's just a great that one he probably wrote the second that kid came out he's like okay here we go we'll go write a song now i think that's probably how that i, I don't know for a fact but zoe jane is, is one of those songs you could tell it's just that came out of the sky when he saw that kid probably for the first time and that that happens a lot with artists i was i, I believe is a great song yeah, Believe is a great song, too. Believe is a great song. Believe could be a pop song. I, I, I Kelly Clarkson needs to grab it and, and sing Believe. I, I, I really do think that that song, Carrie Underwood, somebody needs to grab that song and do it. I, I think they would have a huge hit with it. I 100% believe that. And the other song that I wrote down is uh, the, song, the Epiphany. Yeah. And it's so slow. But it's so it's great. so unbelievably slow and it's so moody. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the song that's got the line, it's always raining in my head. Right. And I and I'm not a lyric guy, so I don't connect with Stain that way. Although it's it's hard not to because his lyrics, they're so memorable. Mm -hmm. And even me, Epiphany, knowing that it's always raining in my head. I, I know that lyric in that song. And you're saying, well, Rod, of course. Those things don't stick with me. Lyrics and songs, they just don't. But man, that guy can really write some words. I mean, he's a poet. He can really, really write some lyrics. You know, had you said that 10 years ago, Aaron Lewis is a poet, people would have fucking laughed their asses off at you probably. You know what I mean? Because there's that whole, there was some, there was some stink on Stain for a while back, back in the day. Remember that? There was this all like, like I said earlier, Mopey, my dad hates me and all this shit. And there yeah. was some stink on Stain for a while. And you know what? I was always there with those guys. I was like, fuck that, man. That dude can write some songs. He writes a beautiful melody. And you know what? Here's this big, scary, kind of a bear. I almost got beat up by him, sort of looking dude, intimidating. And he writes these amazing love songs, basically. And you're like, yeah, that doesn't seem to work, but it works for him, you know? Yeah, they, um, six albums, I think. There's a Greatest Hits album. On the Greatest Hits album, this is one of my favorite things. There's cover songs on there. They did, what, Comfortably Numb? Yeah. Tool, Sober, and uh, and I think uh, the Allison Chain song, Nutshell. And to include some covers on your Greatest Hits album, I just thought it was cool Maybe they needed X amount of tracks on there and it was some kind of a backhanded way to get it. I don't, you know, who knows why they bands do what they do. There's always, I'm sure there's a story about it, but I love that they included that. Uh, I just thought it was so cool. And Stained is a band that that greatest hits album, fucking a, everyone's a banger. Every yeah. single one is a banger on that. So it, it Stain's greatest hits is killer. Yeah. Yeah. Now let me ask you this. Cause this is, <clears throat> this is a game we play, right? This is the, the, the goofy radio game we play. It's like you look back the last year and you know, blink One Eighty Two comes out with a new song. They got a new album coming out. That song goes number one on the alt charts, huge song. Boom. Blink's one blink One Eighty Two's back. Smashing pumpkins had some mild success with their single. They released last fall that did. Okay. Their new singles pretty damn good. That one's going to do better. You know, pumpkins are kind of back in a way you know the lincoln park track the lost lincoln park song comes back that's a monster that's great you're seeing a lot of these bands and there's going to be more coming you know um in the next year does stain have it in them say stain writes a pretty good song puts it on a new album does it get any love in the radio world uh if it's it, it, it depends on the you know the song, it's it's, be, say this, say this song's pretty I, damn good I hate to state the obvious, but it's got to be really good because the offspring were kind of done. In this, in everything that you said is true. Exactly. The offspring, the offspring is another one. The offspring were kind of done. And then we got a hold of this track 
And wait a minute, this is really, really good, you know? And it's a fun song. Red Hot Chili Peppers, you know, the last album wasn't a whole lot on there, you know? We, because it's the Chili Peppers, you give them the respect, they're gonna put out a single, okay, we're gonna try it out, we're, we're gonna play it, but nobody did anything with it. And this new album, I mean, Black Summer is a huge, massive hit. So the Chili Peppers nice. are back. You mentioned the Smashing Pumpkins. Um, you know, Weezer was done. Weezer was done mm -hmm. before they went and put out that cover of Africa. Yep. They were done. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, they're being invited to the iHeartRadio Alter Ego show and the, 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 the awards and all this. And then all of a sudden a new album, and then boom, okay, we're back with Weezer a little bit. So I, I think that if the band comes out with something, there's still, there's, there's a seat for them at our radio station and kind right. of what you're doing there, yep. but there's not a seat at the table at most alternative radio stations in the country. Um, True. It's yeah. weird. The successful ones, there's room. But for some reason, these alt stations are still pushing this pop alt agenda. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not doing great. You know, working, it's, baby. it's not doing great. It's not working. And the fact that, you know, the buzz is doing what we're doing and, and not bragging because you, you, you can back it up. It's just we're so unbelievably successful. It, it, how could they not just be stamping these ones out the way that we're doing it? And they're not. They're not. They're just letting us do our own thing. So Stain would definitely have, um, we would play it. We yeah. would play it for sure. And then if it's good, then then great. You know, Stain's back. Great. I, I hope they do because I, I would jump on it in a second too because, you know, and, and what's interesting, I've had this conversation the last few weeks with a lot of different record label. You know, they, they, they call you up. Hey, what do you think of this new song? I'm like, that's pretty fucking poppy. Why don't you go talk to the top 40 station dude down the street? And they're like, no, this is an alternative song. I'm like, man, you're. I think you're. You're missing it, man. Like, this is. It's, look around. That shit ain't really flying for most most cities. That poppy shit ain't happening. And there's. And I'm noticing a bit of a change. You know, like we've always talked about it for years. You know, who's gonna save rock and roll? Is it Greta Van Fleet? Is it you know the Black Keys? Is it? <clears throat> I don't think there's gonna be a savior. We're not gonna get that Nirvana moment. But I think people are realizing, hey, wait a minute, guitars are cool. Let's keep using them. And I think there is a bit of a change happening a, a little bit. You brought up Greta Van Fleet and I was disappointed in hearing they clearly aren't trying to be on the radio. Uh, their new no. single, it's real trippy. And, you know, they've really just gone all in on the, the airiness of Zeppelin and mm -hmm. they're not concerned. They're like, okay, we tried it. We wrote some songs. We tried to get on the radio a couple. We got a little bit of nibble you know what? Enough people know our name. We can make a living doing this now. You know, yeah. we can, we can show up on festivals and we can do this. The, it, it really, cause the struts, I talk about them in the same vein. The struts are trying, mm -hmm. they're trying to craft songs and to be on the radio. Greta Van Fleet, I wish was doing the same and they're not. And you know, they, that's what they want to do. So I can't tell these guys that's where they, that's the space that they want to live in right now. I wish they would write some more radio friendly stuff and get on the, and, and give us another shot to, to, you know, to play them. The struts, I think they're writing great songs and they're just not testing. Meaning they're just not getting mean? there. They're not, they're just not getting to that level. They're not at that level of that first single. Nothing's really hit since then. And it's, and it's a shame. And there's other bands out there. Like you said, the guitar, there's, there's the, the Dirty Honey is a band that I love. Right. I love this band, Dirty Honey. And I just don't know where their place is. But it's a great rock band. They're younger guys. I, I, I put Wolfgang Van Halen in that category. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that that song is going to be a big radio song, but I don't know what he wants to do. You know, he wants to do whatever he wants to do. Wolfgang Van Halen doesn't need to worry about money and selling albums. He wants to sell albums, but he wants to be his true self in the studio. And he, he can, he's lucky to be able to do that. It's funny. I mean, I got the email the other day, new Greta Van Fleet. I fucking almost ripped my laptop in half trying to open it up to hear it. I'm going, here we go. This is going to be it. And I like, was like, please, prepared. Let, please be the one. <clears throat> please just rip into a guitar and make it a great fucking hook. And let's go, baby. Here we go. And I was so excited 
and I'm playing it and it's just, it's, I like the song. It's a great song. It ain't for the fucking radio though. It's not, it's not going to get played anywhere really. And I just no. was so disappointed. I was so bummed out. And I actually spoke with one of the record people that, you know, blasted it out who, who is their label. And I said, they're like, Hey, what'd you think of the Greta Van Fleet? I go, you guys aren't trying to get on the radio, I guess. Huh? And she starts laughing. She's like, she's like, yeah, you know, what are you going to do? And I'm like, fuck. I said, you got a, a couple of cheerleaders out in the world that will get you where you want to go, at least help lead the charge. And I'm talking about you in Houston and me here. And there's a couple other guys in, around the country. And I'm like, fucking go in there and hit somebody or something. Tell them to write a fucking hooky song that we can get out, you know? Uh, but yeah, it, even the label's like, yeah, yeah, when I, mm, that's what they wanted to do. And I'm like, fuck. And then I, I told you, I, I've talked about it, you know, sitting down with with you two and Bono. And when they when they put out that album uh, a couple of years back, you know, they're talking to the program directors and they're looking us in the eye. And they're like, we, Bono's like, we want to be on the radio. Mm -hmm. What do you need us to do? Do you need a different mix? What do you, we want to be on the radio. Meanwhile, Greta Van Fleet's like, fuck you. Yeah. I, we're just a ton of girls think that we're awesome on YouTube. We're good. Yeah. You and know? that's and, okay too. And, and Greta Van Fleet can make a living. I think they can make a living. I don't know how comfortable, um, but I think they can make a living doing what they're doing now. But, yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. But they're not anywhere near, you know, how the black crows really got super grateful daddy and shit, mm -hmm. but not until they had five hits. They needed the hits. Greta, Greta Van Fleet did never, they never had that. They just had a little taste. The problem is they get on a festival. They're probably, you know, third, fourth name down and they're probably making good money playing live. Shit. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. Technically they don't, you know, and it's, and it's, these are the things like, I know we're getting a little bit in the weeds here, but like, that's the kind of shit that goes on. You're like guys like me and, and you, and there's a few other PDs around the country that are the rock guys. And it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Come on. And I get it. You're not, as an artist, you're not trying to write the hit, but you are, you are. You don't think that an, a band, your favorite band isn't going in the studio going, all right, we're going to, let's fucking, which one's going to be the hit? Which one's going to be the single off the album? Right. You know what I mean? You got to write the fucking hit because that's what's going to keep the gravy train flowing. Otherwise, you don't write a hit. Guess what you're not doing? Eating. <laughs> you're not eating. You're not. You really aren't. Sure. Unless you can do the Greta Van Fleet thing and these other bands nowadays. But yeah, I was bummed, man. I was like, fuck. I was I was super bummed when I heard it. I just said, "Wow, this fucking song is going nowhere." It's like going the song. nowhere. I like the song. It's not going on the radio. I'm not playing it. It's not gonna happen. Fucking Metallica wild. came out with a three and a half minute song. They understand fucking, the game. They want to be on the radio. Metallica doesn't need a, a nickel, and they want to be on the radio. And they yeah. packaged up a song, and even their second single, it's longer, but it's good. Um, I'm excited about this Metallica stuff. Yeah, I mean that's the thing though. At least they get it. They're like, yeah, all right. We don't, you know, we're we're the eight minute song guys, but let's let's slice one together and make a hit or, or make something that's palatable for the radio station to play. And that way we get a bunch of press and we sell concert tickets and merch. They understand the model of the game, you know. Yeah. And that's I don't know. There's no there ain't no talking to these kids today, Rodney. I don't know what we're gonna do. These fucking kids. They need to talk Did to us. Get Irish? Was that was there a little? Irish and like an older Irishman, or I'm tired. Maybe that he had visited Scotland. What, what was what just happened I there? Know. I don't know. I've been watching too many movies lately, man. I've been watching fucking way too much shit. I've been watching you, you, you watch that Daisy fucking Duke and the Six, or whatever the show is called, Daisy Jones and the Six. I mean, I do believe that we had this discussion and you weren't watching it. I'm like, what the fuck's the matter with you, dude? How, how are you not watching this show? I'm like six or seven episodes in now, and it's it's pretty good. I like it. I like it. You don't it a love lot. it? I don't love it. I like it a lot. You know what I mean? Like I like it a lot, and I get I, it. And it's and it's cool, like rock star shit. So it's cool. And I like the story. I think by the time it's done, and no zero spoilers, I think by the time that it's done and it's wrapped up, you go, oh, you know what? I loved it. I, I think you will. I think the last two episodes are great. Yeah, I think it's the scope of the work that's going to make it all come together because it is cool. And that chick, that fucking Elvis's granddaughter, oh my God, is she talented? Talented, awesome. huh? She's so cool. 
so freaking cool. And I like so the cool dude. But fucking annoying though. She's annoying, right? Oh no, she's a the dude. Uh, what's his name? Billy, the lead singer. He's like, he didn't want her in the band. He goes, she's a powder keg, and that's exactly. What, we've all worked with people like that in the industry. There's people like that that are just disruptors, but fucking uber talented. But God, what a pain in the ass. Yes. So you got to take your pill with that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the talented as hell, but my God, what a shit show. Yeah. Been watching that. It's, I, I think you're going to upgrade good to great okay. when it's done. I want to. I, I really do. And, I, and there's so much I like it. They're nailing a lot of cool shit about it. You know, the, the vibe, the 70s is fucking cool. I mean, all of it. It's great. Does it, does it help? Does it move forward? Me saying, I think Fleetwood Mac is awesome material for a biopic, a theater biopic. Does it move that forward? Or now that we have this, it's like, oh, we don't need it. No, I, th I think we do. I think we do need it. And I think that, you know, the thing with the Fleetwood Mac is there is so much fucking dirty, dirty dirt back there. You almost got to kind of wait till they're all dead and then put it out. Cause I don't, I just don't see how you fucking do it. If somebody's alive, well, I didn't say that. I mean, they fight now and they can't fucking get along. How are you going to get a movie made? You know, and they all got to sign off on all that shit probably. And the kiss movie is in the works. Yeah. <sighs> They better not fuck that. I, that better be, I want all of it. I want all the dirt. I want the warts. No. I want the bullshit. No. No. Don't be just going, oh, we're awesome. We've always been awesome. We started out in New York and we didn't know what kind of makeup to wear. And I did the shoes didn't fit. And then bam, we're kiss. And no, now we're beating won't. a dead horse for the next 20 years. There's no. the movie. I don't want that. They must, they must protect this house. So yeah, I know. you won't get where I thought, you know, when they were doing the Madonna movie and they scrapped it, but I thought yeah. Madonna probably would be, leave herself pretty vulnerable and would allow a lot of shit to be shown. I mean, I think, I think Elton John allowed a lot of shit to be shown. And I think he, he did. you know, I, even though that movie sucked, <sighs> I, I, just, I just, I just didn't like it, but I was surprised Elton, Elton was definitely let them. Okay. You can show this. You can show how vulnerable I was. You can show how bad off I was here. Um, Kiss won't do that. No, and that's what's yeah. going to make it not that good. It's not going to be that good. I don't, 100%. you know, and, and, and what's really tough this day and age is between all the VH1 behind the musics, the the interviews, the the TV shows that they've done over the years, you know the story. You don't necessarily need it. You know what I mean? You don't necessarily need that biopic unless it's really going to uncover some cool shit, you know? They're going to try to sell it like, okay, there's some stuff here that you guys have never heard about. Untrue. We've heard everything. No, I, we've I heard everything. I mean, for years, I mean, the Kiss Army and just they've drudged up, they've dug up every single story, everything. Unless, and this ain't going to happen, unless they let, okay, you know what? Let Peter and Ace come in and let them tell their side. That ain't going to happen. Gene is going to control, Gene and Paul are going to control the narrative on that. And there's, no, it's not going to be juicy at all. But that would be the way to do it. Four ongoing narratives all the way through. You know what I mean? Like that would be fucking good. That would well, be that, that was that was the dirt. Yeah, that was the Molly Crew thing, which that was the Molly actually, Crew thing. That was the dirt. That was, you know, the four stories were separate and they didn't always align up, but they kind of all were in the same place at the same time, but everybody had a different take on how it went. As you would in any situation, everyone has a different recollection of what happened. You, you go to, a, a you know, something crazy happens, what happened? And you get four stories that are all similar, but you have different perspectives on each one and what you saw and what you heard, you know? So it makes sense. That's enough of this horse shit tonight. 82 in the can, baby. We're done. I'm calling it. All right, Fucking, bro. I'm done. I've had enough of this shit tonight, man. Good stuff with the stain. That was kind of fun. Um, I'm going to have to go dig around some posters now. I think I've got an old Wonder Woman poster somewhere in this house. I do think I have one somewhere. <laughs> I'll leave you this for my final thought. I did have a Wonder Woman poster. And when I first moved here to Houston, 04, I started up a dodgeball league. And, you know, the joke was, you know, what if I get hit in the jewels? I don't have any kids, blah, blah, blah. I went and tossed some in a Dixie cup and they froze it for me. So it was kind of a bit, but I did pay for it for a couple of years to keep it in storage. And I went to the place. I went to the clinic 
And I brought the Wonder Woman poster to help me. Like, ha ha, I brought the Wonder Woman poster, guys. You just taped it on the wall or you just were like, yeah, screaming motivation. I brought the Wonder Woman yeah. poster and they, there was Playboy magazines in there. There was stuff in there too. And it What's was in a clinical setting. It was in a like a hospital looking room. So hot. There were, there were Playboys in there. What year was this? 78? Jesus Christ, Playboys? Didn't yeah. they have the internet back then? 2004. Wow. I don't want you getting sticky on the keys. Uh, well, well, you think those magazines aren't a disaster? You could yeah. have fucking birthed 200 babies just with page 74 by itself. Bro, that's why I brought my own material. I brought a Wonder Woman poster for motivation, okay? And then they, they froze it for me. And then uh, I had a name for him. And all, I can't remember all this stuff. It was a bit for a while. And then finally, they're like, they sent me a bill. And I'm like, I go, you, are you, I had to call them. And I said, you promise me you're going to throw it away. They're like, yeah, we have to. I said, don't just, you know, send it off somewhere. Because, you know, they give you the numbers and everything. And it was high octane. Okay. My jizz was high octane. I'm sure it was great. Yeah. And, uh, and I said, don't send that shit out. I'm not, I, I'm not giving you, I, but you have to destroy it. And they, so they gave me the word, they gave me the paperwork and everything. And yeah, it was like 500 bucks a year to keep it, you know, 300 degrees below zero. So but going I, back, going back to that day, I jerked to a Wonder Woman poster in a, in a room and then you like, come out, everybody knows what you've done. Well, you that know? was my question. Like you, you, you know, when you do it in your comfort of your own, you know, closet or shower or whatever it is in your house right okay there's a little when you finish up there's a little bit of mopping up and there's a little bit of shame there's shame there's always shame in my world i'm like man that's fucking why'd i do that there's shame involved you know there's just shame it, i can't imagine like walking out going hey so it's just like whatever it's, it's fucking just weird. like peeing in a cup is there i mean there's a little there's a little bit of weirdness walking around with your piss in a cup at the doctor's yeah. office yeah it's weird now i think what they do what my guy does it's like okay here there's a little door there put it in there shut the door you don't gotta but before that you had to walk out with your piss and walk it back in your room okay done here it is you gotta <laughs> hand it off to the girl it's awful um it was kind of like that so i mean that's why people go there to do that i know so it's fucking weird man it, yeah Again, it was a radio bit. I'm, you know, it's 04. I'm sure you're zany DJ guy. I'm wacky, wacky radio guy. You know, honk, honk. Yeah, yeah. No, I got you, man. That's, so, that's just... right there. I brought my own material. I brought Wonder Woman in the room with me. Oh my God. I'm sure Linda Carter's really thinking about that right now. Anything for the final thoughts, Jason? No, no, I can't top that. So I'm out. I'm done. I've had enough for today, man. I'm just looking forward to you coming in in a couple of weeks. We'll we'll have some fun out there at Jazz Fest and hanging out. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, guys, um, thank you for listening. Um, you can watch this whole thing on Play Pants Pod on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts and all that good stuff. And if you want to drop us a list of your top five favorite Stain songs, I love when you guys contribute your list or anything that maybe was said you want to comment on and say what we got wrong, what we got right, whatever. Um, I don't see a lot of people commenting on what we got right. I do see a lot of what we got wrong, but I, I love it all. I, we welcome it all. So you can hit us up on all of our socials at Play Pants Pod. And the most interaction seems to be coming on our YouTube page underneath that episode. So uh, make sure you share your stuff. Thank you very much. That's it. I'm done. Let's go. It's time. Find us wherever you listen to podcasts. See us on our YouTube channel and follow our social media pages at Play Pants Pod.